Ay, okay. So, for this video, uh, we reveal ko yung sagot, no, sa exam. So, ganun talaga ngayon. So, the purpose of this video is para um, may feedback or ma malaman nyo kung saan kayo nagkamali. Tapos, kung ano mga pwede nyo gawin. So, yeah. Okay. So, first question is, what do you call the materials that are produced using human's understanding and are not familiar with nature since they possess characteristic properties that are superior than the natural? So, um, note lang, no? So, lahat ng questions dito ay uh, derived sa module na binigay ko. So, kung may mga questions man dito na uh, malayo, parang wala naman. Actually, lahat kasi derived. Ibig sabihin derived by ma'am. Not, not exactly ganun yung tanong, no? Pero binabago ko kasi yung tanong. Okay? So, for example, for this kind of question, ang sagot dito is, obviously, it's engineered materials. Okay? So, that's the answer. Engineered materials. Okay? So, engineered materials. So, when you say engineered materials, ito yung ito yung mga materials na kaya nga engineered eh. You engineered it, so you changed it, so you op optimized it and improved it. Okay, so engineering is all about in, uh, is all about uh, optimizing, improving, and enhancing things. No. So if you want to have something enhanced, then you should talk to an engineer. Now, so that's the answer, raw engineered materials. So second question, true or false, civilizations advanced... Uh, civilization's advancement and development is due to their ability and knowledge to produce and manipulate materials to fill their needs. The answer is true. Again, as I said, no, yung mga Spartans noon, yung ahu ahu mga Spartans, they will not be proficient in their warfare without the invention of bronze, yung mga shields nila, yung mga shields, spears, yung mga arrows. So actually, before kasi, yung before may invento yung mga arrows, yung mga swords lang ang laban, no, yung mga shields noon, uh, Kung meron kang spada at meron kang shield, manalo ka. Pero nung biglang dumating si Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan, dinala niya yung technology ng mga arrows. So, talo, natatalo nila yung mga kalaban. So, kahit sobrang dami ng kalaban, kaya nilang talunin yun kasi meron silang arrow. So, long range versus short range ang labanan. So, talo talaga ang short range dito. So, that's how important uh, material development is. So, third question is, what do you call the materials that are classified? to have properties between a metal and a non-metal. So, that is actually a ceramic. Okay. Com uh, ceramic. The answer is ceramics. Okay. So, composite is is not, uh, does not uh, best fit on this question kasi composite is a combination of two or more um, elements or uh, elements. Uh, materials, materials having different properties. So, uh, composites ay yung combination, for example, uh, bamboo, tapos kulango, tapos putik, yung ganun. Polymers, on the other hand, are non-metal, so they're plastics. So, ceramics, on the other hand, are semiconductors, so they're, they're ceramics, so they're between metal and non-metal, so plastic. Smart, smart materials ay, ano lang yan, bogus lang yan. Okay, so polymers and plastics are basically the same, no? And now, we have a, solu uh, we have a problem solving here, so says here that you made a test wherein you found out that your average particle size of your favorite polvoron is 98.57 times 10 raised to t micron. Your friend told you it's a nanomaterial but your teacher said it's not a nanomaterial so he's telling the truth. Now, as I already said in the module, okay, anything or any particle having a size which is less than, okay, so when your size is less than or equal to 100 okay 100 nanometers okay that means you are a nano material okay now ibig mong sabihin sir yung mga 120 hindi na nano material yes hindi na po yung 101 uh, yes hindi na yun po yung nano 105 hindi na rin po so, as I said, no, anything equal, less than or equal to 100 nanometers, so, nanomaterial sila. So, i-convert nyo yung sago, uh, i-convert nyo to 98.57 times 10 raised to the third power micron. This is actually equivalent to 908, no? 908 mic, uh, nanometer. Nine, uh, no, sorry, uh, 98.57 nanometer. So, this is less than 100, so, your friend is telling the truth. So it's your friend, not your teacher. Okay? So this is just an example, no? So, 
Okay, so problem solving, calculate the number of vacancies per cubic meter of gold at 900 degrees Celsius. So the energy required for vacancy formation is 0.98 electron volt per atom. So use the density for gold as 18.63 gram per cubic centimeter and atomic weight as 196.9 ah, gram per mole. Now, as I said in the module, no, yung vacancies is ganito. When you have a material, a cube material like this, okay? In a cube, a cube material, no? at room, uh, room, room temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius, merong vacancy yan. Okay? Now, kapag tumaas yung temperature mo, naging 900 degrees Celsius, yung tendency niya nag-expand. When you say, nag-expand kasi ang molecule. So, when we say expand, uh, so the material expands. So, when a material expands, the most logical re uh, conclusion is that there will be increased vacancies. No? So, yung mga spaces between atoms ay lalaki. Okay. Now, the question is, when gold is heated to, nine, to 900 degrees Celsius, okay, how much, uh, how many vacancies are there? So, how many vacancies yung magkakaroon sa isang um, solid material kapag nagkaroon ng heat increase in temperature? Now, they said that the per atom, no, in order for the atoms to move, in order for atoms to move, you have to at least 0 0.9 electron volt no, per atom. So, imagine yun na lang, no, sa isang, uh, sa isang cube of a material which is gold, napakarami yung atoms. Now, each atom requires 98.98 electron volts for them to have a separation. Okay, so meron pang density yan. So when we say density, diba, that is how much matter is present in a particular cube. So, how many matters are present? Now, when we say matter, it's, uh, dito, ang context natin ng matter is the mass. Okay, when the mass here, uh, actually the density, now when we say density, it's actually the mass per unit volume. So when you say volume, it's a cube, di ba? Mass is 19.67 uh, 19 ba? Uh, I'm not mistaken. Oh, sorry. It's 18.63. 18.63 gram per cubic centimeter. So that's the density of this the gold. Uh, gold. Now, kung tataas, daw, kung tataas daw natin ang temperature, i-heat natin yun to 900, uh, 900 degrees Celsius, there Possibly, I don't know, um, it will expand, obviously, because there will be what we call thermal expansion. But, depende, kung ang melting point ng gold is less than 900, then magme-melt siya, magiging siyang li par liquid form. But, that's not the point, no? That's not the point. The point is, we have to find, for the number of vacancies present in this, in this uh, cube of gold, no? kapag inini siya ng 900 degrees Celsius. So, what are the given? So, we have density which is 18.63 no, gram per cubic centimeter. And we have the atomic number for gold, which is uh, AU. So I'll mention just that. Okay, so that's 196 grams per mole. 96.9 grams per mole. Okay, and we have the required energy for uh, for formation is 0 0.9 EV per atom. Okay, so what else? So we have the temperature, which is 900 degrees Celsius. So now, we have to find for the formula. So yung formula dun sa, uh, formula dito sa vacancies ay actually binigay rin naman sa module. So medyo magulo lang yung sa module. Yun ang problem. Okay, so shrink ko lang yan. So shrink. Okay, so for the solution, I'll use black. Okay, so the formulas for this kind of problem to be used is we'll, we will have two equations. So we have to first find, uh, no, we have to first find the vacancies. So wait lang, ang tanong. Okay, number of vacancies per cubic meter. Uh, okay. So before this one, we have to find how many atoms are present here. We have to find how many atoms are present in this material. So, to start, no, to find out one, so, how many atoms 
are present. Now, to find this, uh, to answer this question, we have to use the formula N, which is the number of atoms present in that. Um, this is N sub A. Avogadro's number multiplied by the density divided by the atomic weight of the gold. Okay. Oh. So, so okay, substitute natin. So, we have Avogadro's number. So, kung hindi nyo alam, pwede nyo may Google. Binigay ko rin naman sa module. Avogadro's number is basically 6.023 uh, times 10 raised to the 23rd power. And density ng ating gold is 18.63 divided by the atomic weight which is 196.9 grams per mole okay so n will give us 5.6987526 times 10 raised to the 20 29th power Check on all it. 6.023 E23 times 18.63. Okay, meron pa pala tayong conversion factor. So, mapasin nyo kasi meron tayong mga grams, no? May mga grams tayo. So, we have to use conversion factor. So, we convert grams to kilograms here and cubic centimeter to cubic meter. So, kaya tayo gagamit ng. Um, uh, multipli uh, multiplying factor which is 10 raised to 6 nasa module din na yun mapapansin nyo ok so it's 5.6 uh, 5.6987552526 uh, times 10 raised to 29 power that is actually vacancies no uh, no, no, not vacancies. That is the number of atoms. So, ibig sabihin, yan, yan, ganyan karami yung atom in that particular uh, material na may density yung ganito. Okay, so one, I think, th this, this is going to be one cubic meter. One cubic meter. Okay? So, now that we know the number of atoms, we can finally find, uh, we can finally solve for the number of vacancies. Kasi alam natin kailan yung atoms eh. Now, for this one, ang formula na, ang formula na gagamitin is number of vacancies and back is equivalent to the number of atom. Okay. Then, exponential, xp, negative, uh, qt, cute, all over the temp, uh, k, and then the temperature. So, yung K dyan is the energy required for displacement, which is in electron volt per uh, electron volt per degree sa, uh, temperature. So, ano yan? Meron yung, meron yung actually value. Kita nyo rin sa module. And QT is the energy required for for this uh, for, for vacancy. Okay, so yan yun. So, substituting the value, we have 5.69 5206 times 10 raised to the 29 power exp uh, sa calculator nyo kita nyo yung ganyan no? so ganyan yun so yan raised to ganyan no? so magiging raised to qt all over kt so ganyan actually yun yung xp okay. so magiging negative uh, qt ang qt natin is 0 0.98 and we have 113 uh, 1173.15 Okay. So that's the temperature pala. Okay. Okay, temperature. Then multiplied by Oh, wait, sorry. K is giving out pala to sa module 8.62 uh, times 10 raised to negative 5 and then multiplied by the temperature. Ituloy natin. Dilitan ko na lang muna. 8.62 times 10 raised to the negative 5 power. Multi, uh, multiplied by 1173.15 now if you're going to ask me sir saan galing 1173.5 that's actually uh, degree celsius convert to kelvin okay now to do that all you need to do is degree celsius plus um, 273 okay so yun lang ang 
Okay, so that's the that's the way for you to convert, no? So that's basically uh, 900 plus 200 is 73.15. Okay, so again, if you have 1 degree Celsius, so sa degree Kelvin, that is 273.15, uh, so maging 274.15. Uh, Kelvin. So, yun ang, yun ang conversion. So, that's degree Kelvin, not degree Celsius. Okay? So, yun yun. Okay. Solve. Now, to number na number of vacancies. Okay? NVAC. It's equivalent to 3.5 5, 2, 4, 2, 3 times 10 raised to the 25th power vacancies. Vacancies per cubic meter. So, yun ang final na sagot. So, it means to say that when you, you when you hit a 1, cu uh, one cubic meter of a, of a gold having this kind of density at degree, uh, 900 degrees Celsius, you will have, you will have, ganito kadami. Ang dami niya, no? 3.52 times 10 raised to 25th power vacancies. No? Ganun kadami yung vacancies. So, nag-expand siya. Ganun kadami yung vacancies. No? Per atom kasi din. Right? So, that's the answer. It's 3.25. 3.25. Uh, that's 3.52 times raised to 25, uh, 25th power. Okay, so, that's it. So, second, uh, next question is, what is the correct type of test needed if you want to determine the strength of a rope? Now, strength of the rope is yung paghila. No, hila. Yun naman ang labanan, eh, hila. So, obviously, it's not compression. Okay? Obviously, it's not flexural. And obviously, it's not torsional. Now, just to review, just to review you, okay? Okay? So, if this is your material, okay, and this is your force, so, this is called compression. Okay? Now, if this is your material, and your force goes like this, no? So, para magti-twist siya, tendency yung material mo ay magti-twist. Ganyan, magti-twist. So, this is torsional. Tor, tor, final. Torsional siya. Or when they say shear, shear or uh, shear force, okay? So the pa. Yun. So when you say flexural, on the other hand, okay. So we actually, when we say flexural, ganito naman. So this is your material, and supported on both ends. No, flexural is like this. Ito yung force mo ay Yung force mo ay ganito. So, that's flexural. So, ang tendency ay magbibend. Magbibend na ganito, di ba? Yung ano mo. So, that's flex. Kaya nga, flex eh. Parang curved. You know? That is flexural. Flexural. Now, tension. Okay? Tensile strength is like this. Pahila. So, it means to say that a rope is tested based on the tensile strength. Not not compression, obviously. Hindi mo naman kinocompress ang rope. Hindi mo rin naman fineflex ang rope. Hindi mo rin ginawagawang torsional ang rope. So, it's tensile. So, pahila. Next question is, what is the type, what is the correct type of test need, needed if you want to determine the strength of a concrete to support weight? Now, this is compression, obviously. <coughs> Sa pang kape. Obviously, this is compression. Obvious na yun. Okay, so next question is true or false. So the resistivity of the material never changes. Masabi dito, the, the resistivity of the material never changes even if the resistance of the material increases or decreases. Is this true? No. Is this true? Or false? So, Tagalog, ang resistivity daw ng material ay hindi nagbabago. Kahit na tumaas o bumaba yung resistance. No. The resistivity of the material never changes. So, ito kasi yun. So, this is, a, this is your material. And it has a property. No? It has a property. Resistivity. Now, when we say change in resistance, 
there are th the only the only factor that affects the resistance of a material is temperature it's temperature now in kapag tumaas ang temperature when you get hot your resistance is always is also going to get up when the temperature is down which is cold ang, ang resistance mo din ay bababa okay now resistivity is not affected by temperature why because resistivity is an inherent property of a material so it means to say that is a property identity yan ng material and the, and the identity of the material never changes even if you even if you break it into two even if you break it into three even if you make a smaller pieces no kung i-chop mo siya or kumuha ka lang ng isang katiting kung uminit man yan o lumamig the, the resistivity of the material will never change so parang ano yan eh density so ang density ng water will always be 1000 gram per cubic uh, cubic meter so uh, it will always be like that no so it will never change unless maging gas siya no? unless maging uh, yeah unless maging gas siya no so it will change so di na siya di na siya magiging density ganyan kasi it's already a gaseous state so that's that's uh, when we say resistivity it's an inherent property so it, it will never change even if the resistance increases no so it never changed so the answer is true so next question is this is a result of a material absorbing more energy beyond its heat capacity limit now in layman's term kapag nasobrahan ng absorb na init at hindi niya kaya a material will uh, a material will melt uh, a material will burn ano isipin mo kasi parang hirap pala ng choices kasi merong burn at meron ding melt but the only logical here is that it's it's going to melt no the material will melt if it is beyond its heat capacity li uh, if, it, if it is beyond its heat capacity limit it will melt no it will melt so contract is ibig sabihin malamig expand no not necessarily when a material uh, absorbs uh, absorbs energy in the form of heat may tendency talaga ang material na mag-expand so it's already natural no it will expand now ang pinag-uusapan kasi natin ay heat capacity limit so when it exceeds no pag lumagpas siya sa heat capacity limit it will melt then when it goes beyond no it goes beyond melting it will burn so again the answer is melt the most appropriate answer is melt Next question, permanent magnets like the ones we always pos always have you know, possesses two magnetic poles. Ferrous me a metal like iron is magnetic but temporarily. If a magnet is attached to an iron nail, how many magnetic poles does it have then? Okay, always remember you know, the rule. And a magnet will always will only have two. Kaya dipoles. Hindi magiging tatlo yan. So kahit anong gawin mo sa ma kahit gawin mong tatlo, apat, lima, magdidikit-dikit yan, magko-combine. Magko-combine yung kanilang magnetic field. No? Kaya tendency, magiging dalawa pa rin ang, ang pole. It's either north or south pole. Okay? So, next question. 5 resistors, 5 ohms, 10 ohms, 15 ohms, 20 ohms, 25 ohms, are connected in parallel, consume sa total of 1.644 kilowatts. So, calculate the total power when these 5 resistors connected in series. So, warning, round up your answer to the nearest whole number only. So, whole number lang tatanggapin ng uh, form. Okay, so we have uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. So, it says here that there is a supply. I don't know what kind of supply there is. It says that the resistors connected in parallel no? so it to be 1 2 3 4 and then lastly we have 5 so it says all connected in parallel no so connected in parallel daw so we have 5 10 15 20 and then 25 so to get the total resistance there, uh, there we have to do this one R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 
plus 1 over r5 wait sorry r5 okay so rt here if you're going to do if you're going to do the math it will give you 2.19 ohms okay 2.19 ohms kapag parallel so change na natin yan so when you get the total resistance no always remember that you can do this no since this is rt no na combine mo na eh so magiging rt na yan rt which is 2.19 ohms okay now we have a different scenario sabi dito what if you're going to do in series okay so, series na daw. Series. Okay? So, series, obviously, magiging 5 plus 10 plus, uh, 5 plus 10 plus 25 plus, uh, 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 25, no? So, magiging total uh, series resistance mo is, ano ba yan? <laughs> 25, no? So, 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 25, that's gonna be 75 ohms. So, that's the total. So, magiging ganito din, no? Ganito din, no? Oh, di ba? So, RT in series, in total, is 75 ohms. Now, meron bang pinagkaya ba sa itsura ng dalawa? Wala, di ba? Same lang. However, in order for you to get the power, you have at, you have to have at least 2. So, you have to, you have to remember this formula again. It's gonna be V squared over R, V I, or I squared R. So, that's the formula for fa for power. Now, doon kanina sa ating example, ay sa unang scenario na binigay, you have a seri uh, you have multiple resistors connected in parallel. Yun na meron ka, parallel. Diba? Parallel lahat eh. Now, if you're going to analyze very carefully, no, you have to have at least two, as I said, in order for you to calculate the power. Now, let me ask you this. Is it, anong, anong class, ano ang parameter na kukunin dito? Is it the current? Is it the voltage? Or is it the resistance? Well, if you're going to get the resistance, then obviously not. Kasi hindi mo magagamit. But you have the power formula. We have the, vo uh, we have power here, 1.466 kilowatts. Okay. So, titingnan nyo to, no? Mapapansin nyo. What is the most logical na piliing parameter? Now, if you're going to say current, Problema sa current is the current here is different from the current here, different from the current here, different from the current here, and different from the current here. Now, since you have different currents, no, so is it wise na gamitin yung value ng current para sa kantong klase ng uh, problem? The answer is no. Okay. It's obviously no. So, how about voltage? Can we, see, can we use the voltage, Sir X? Well, Let's see. In a parallel connection, uh, parallel connection of resistors, it is said that the voltage is all is constant. So the voltage across each resistor is the same. Ooh. So we have the clue. So it means we can get the voltage. Okay. So let's get the voltage using this. So as I said, power is equivalent to. So meron tayong V squared over R. Meron tayong V I. So niyat nyan pwedeng gamitin ng V I kasi wala tayong current. No? Meron tayong resistance. Actually, hindi natin pwedeng kunin to kasi nga, wala tayong current. So, we only have this formula. So, V squared over R, which is 2.19. No? So, power na ang power natin is 1, uh, ano nga power? 1.644. Okay. So, the power is 1.644K. Okay. Kasi K to, to denote its kilo. So, V is equivalent to the square root of 1.644K multiplied by 2.19. No. So, the voltage is 88.8. .8. So, 88.8 volts. .8 now, using this, since alam na natin yan, we know now that the same voltage flows through here. So, the voltage is 88.8 .8 volts. Now, hindi natin alam kung ano yung power dyan kasi unknown eh. Yung nga hinahanap natin, unknown. But now, na, now we know that the voltage is 88.8 .8 volts. Okay? 
So what is the power consumed when it is connected in series instead? So we can get the power now. Power is V squared over R. So that's a, um, 88.8 squared divided by resistance which is 75. So the power is now 105.14 watts. Okay. Now, kung nagdududa kayo dyan, kung nagdududa kayo, okay, kung nagdududa kayo, let's verify this mathematically. Okay. Sir, equal, what do you mean by mathematically, sir, x? Now, when we say mathematically, we're going to fix on the formula. So, it said that the power, no, power is V squared over R. Now, as we have understood mathematics well, interpreting this formula says that the power is directly proportional to the voltage squared. And power is in the, is inversely proportional to the resistance. So, in layman's term, no, when the power is high up, it's, it's up, then it, the, if the resistance is up, obviously, power goes down. Okay? Okay? Okay, okay? So, kanina naalala nyo, our resistance in total uh, parallel is 2.19 ohms. So, the resistance is 2.19. Now, our resistance is 75. So, it means to say, our resistor a resistance ay tumaas. So, what do we expect? No? Since the resistor is up, we can expect that the power is down. Tama? Okay. So, noong 2.19 ohms, ang power niya ay 1.644 kilowatts, di ba? It's mataas. Ngayon, ilan na nakuha natin? 105.14. So, can we verify using this uh, formula? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Kasi nga, tumaas yung, yung resistance natin. So, obviously, yung power natin bababa. At bumaba nga ang power natin. So, tama ba ang naging nang, nangyari? Sagot ay oo. Tama. Okay, so, for uh, move on. Okay, so, next question is, sea water boils faster than fresh water both at STP or standard temperature and pressure. So, this is because fresh water requires more heat than sea water in order for it to boil. So, which of the following statement is true? So, boiling, no? Boiling. As I said, no? So, in heat property, we have specific heat. And we have heat capacity. Okay. Now, if you're going to uh, search Google, no? Fresh water has um, required was uh, fresh water requires more heat than uh, fresh water requires more heat than sea water in order for it to boil. So we say in fresh water, okay? Fresh water has higher um, heat capacity than the sea water. So, yun lang naman ang kailangan mo itindihin. So, sabi dito, fresh water is high. Oh, ito yung sagot. Di ba? This is, sea water boils faster than fresh water because it's denser than sea water. Actually, this, this statement is wrong. No? Because fresh water is actually dense, much denser, or more denser than sea water. Mas mababa ang density ng sea water. Ang water, fresh water, ay mas mas taas ng density. So, mali agad ito. Sinungaling yan. Second is, sea water has higher heat capacity than fresh water. This is also false because fresh water has higher heat capacity. And fresh water absorbs heat better. This is not proven, no? Does not mean. When you say you have higher heat capacity, that does not automatically mean that you have... Uh, faster heat uh, heat conductivity it does not mean that no hindi ganun yun so the answer is fresh water has higher heat capacity than sea water so big sabi fresh water requires more energy before it before it starts boiling so kanina material no when you say material when it exceeds its, when it exceeds its heat capacity limit then matutunaw siya ayan too big you know, 
kapan exceed niya, bisa sabihin umabot na ng 100 degrees Celsius yung temperature, mag exceed na niya. So, ang tendency ng water ay mag-evaporate na siya. Hindi naman siya matutunaw. Ano yun? Yung tubig, matutunaw pa. Weird. <laughs> okay, move on. So, problem solving. So, it says here that a half uh, kilo metal is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 25 deg uh, 75 degrees Celsius. So, how much energy is required to heat the metal? So, it says here that the specific heat of metal is 0.129 joule per uh, kilo per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so the answer, so the solution for this uh, problem is, yun na sa formula din, no? Nagay ko na rin sa formula yun. So, it's all about specific heat, no? Find the specific heat. So, the formula for specific heat is equivalent to the mass of the material times the heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. Now, ano yung mga given natin? Okay. So, given natin, so, we have T1 is 25 degrees C, T2 is equals to 75 degrees C, okay, we have specific heat, so, how much, ang tanong dito? How much heat is required? So, heat, required ng tanong how many heat is required or q no so the heat capacity specific heat capacity dito specific heat is equivalent to 0.129 joule per gram degree celsius okay so ang tatanong dito how much heat na heat now so mapapansin niyo sa module may binigay na mga formula doon now you have to derive the formula so since we're given with the specific heat and meron ba tayong mass? O, oh, half kilo. Meron tayong mass? 0.5 kilograms. No? So, meron tayong nito. At meron tayong temperature change. No, ang problema, heat capacity. So, you can also find a different formula for this one. No? Different formula for heat capacity, or C, is equivalent to the change in heat uh, divided by the change in temperature. No? Change in temperature. Hmm. Meron pa lang. Ah, dito. Kulang tayo ng Q. So, ibig sabihin, yung formula ay... Okay, thermodynamics. Okay, wait lang. Thermodynamics pala ito. So, it's gonna be Q. So, heat mass times C, uh, Cp delta T. So, heat equals M Cp delta T. So, this is the specific heat. No? Ito yung formula sa thermo. Ba yan? Makalimutan ko pa. Nasa module ba yun? So, M is 0 0.5. So, pala ka nakagram. Okay, so, convert natin yan. So, 0.5 uh, kilogram is 500 grams. 500 grams. No? 500 grams multiplied by 0 0.129 joule per gram degree Celsius. Now, delta T natin is 75 minus 25. This is 50 degree Celsius. So, mapansin nyo. No? Cancel. Cancel na agad yung gram. So, we will only be left with joule. No? So, when we say heat, no, it's energy. Energy. And when you say energy, that is basically joule. No? Joule. When we say energy, it's joule. So, the heat is equivalent to Alam niya? So, five hundred times zero point one two nine times fifty. So, it's three three 225 Joule. Okay. So, 3225 Joule. Yay! Okay. 3225 Joule. Next question. The strength of steel depends on the concentration of... Okay, kung napanood nyo yung video, no? Yung sa applications and processing of metal alloys. So, sinabi ko dun sa video that the strength of steel depends on one property, which is carbon. So, the higher the 
So, the higher the carbon concentration nila, okay, to what taas din na ang strength ng, ng isang steel. So, yun yung goal. Yun yung trick. So, higher the carbon, higher the strength. No? Yun nga lang, nagiging brittle. Strength ka, higher strength nga, nagiging brittle naman siya. So, next, adding chromium to steel makes it more, actually, stainless steel. No? Stainless steel dun sa video is uh, iron plus carbon plus chromium plus others no other me other metals others no? so chromium here is actually 12% so 12% weight no Ele uh, 11 to 12% weight so madami yan malaki yung chromium sa stainless steel so ang purpose ng stain uh, chromium diyan sa stainless steel is actually to make it corrosion resistant no kaya nga hindi siya kinakalawang corrosion resistant siya hindi siya time resistant Wala naman tayong ganun, wala naman ganung classing terminology. Wala rin ang water resistant, lahat naman ng metal water resistant, di ba? <laughs> Weird lang. Weather resistant, um this is a more technical uh, mer medyo complicated na terminology. Temperature resistant? Mm, that's not the purpose of chromium, no? The purpose of chromium there is to prevent corrosion. So kaya nga siya stainless steel. Next question. You need to purchase a steel bar of no less than 20% weight. No? 20% weight from, manuf uh, from a manufacturer. The manufacturer replied that they only have SAE 1030 on stock. 1030 on stock. So manufacturers ask if this is a good steel for your project. So what will you reply? So you will say yes. You will say yes. Why? Okay. So it said no. SAE 1030. Now, the last two digits is actually the weight concentration of the carbon. And, and your project requires no less than 20% 20, 20 weight. No? Sabi, ang kailangan mo sa project ay no less than 20%. Sa Tagalog, hindi ka dapat bababa sa 20%. Ngayon, kung meron silang 30, ibig sabihin, pwedeng pwede. So, so the answer is yes. The only, the, only logic, the only answer, direct answer is yes. So, yes. Yes, sir. Pwede po yan. Kasi 20 degrees, ah, 20 degrees, 20, 20 weight percent of carbon or less than, hindi pwede. So, next question. Iron, when heated to 1,500 degrees C, Transform from ferrite to blank. Now, nasa module ito. At nasa, wala pala sa module. Nasa video. Kasi, sabi sa video, when you heat iron from, uh, from heat, uh, if you're going to heat iron up to 1,500 degrees Celsius, the ferrite at room temperature, uh, ferrite kasi ang tawag sa iron at room temperature. So, when you heat to 1,500 degrees Celsius, you will have austenite. So, Ano yung ibig sabihin ng Sir Ikal? So, ngayon lang siguro magkakaroon ng opportunity para explain sa inyo. When we say phases, no? Phases. So, example is, we have water, no? We have water. So, at room, at room temperature, at STP, we have water which is liquid. ba? So, if you're going to uh, convert it to solid, no? Solid, so, meron temperature change. So, magiging cold, no? Now, if you're going to change the uh, liquid form to gas, also, you you have a uh, temperature gradient or change in temperature. So, solid, liquid, and gas are phases. No? So, when we heat water, you convert it to gas phase. When you cold it, when you freeze it, you have a solid phase. Yun lang turo sa atin. Pero sa matsay, there are bizarre things like if you're going to if you're going to change the face of a solid which is metal okay kapag tinunaw mo yan pag tinunaw mo yan hindi mo pwedeng sabihin sa kanya na liquid okay kasi yun ang weird eh for example iron if you're going to if you're going to heat uh, iron hindi pa niya naabot yung mga critical temperatures. 
nasa ferrite, nasa ferrite pa lang siya sa F. Now, kapag tataasan mo yung temperature niya up to 1,500 degrees Celsius, nagbabago ang kanyang phase. Yun ang phase niya, austenite. So, hindi siya solid liquid gas na sinasabi. Ibang tawag, we have uh, ferrite, we have austenite, we have calcite, we have martensite. So, dun yun sa video. No? I hope na... So, kung medyo curious pa kayo, kung gusto nyo maging material scientist, then you can... You can go for other uh, you can go for other materials like sa YouTube marami dun mga videos related to uh, different phase transformations of metals. Metals na. Okay, metals. So the answer is austenite. Next question. The mechanical strength of a particle reinforced composite material like concrete depends on what? Always remember when we say particle, no. The strength of a material depends on the particle's size. Okay, so particle size. Mas malaking particle, uh, mas matas. Or, oh wait lang, baliktad pala. The, the, pure, the smaller the particle, the stronger it is. The, the larger it is, may iba, iba eh, iba eh. Iba eh, nagbabago. But overall, the, the, the mechanical strength of a particle reinforced material dep depends on the size of the filler. So, so, next, a rayot shield is a kind of fiberglass. So, which of the following is true about fiberglass? So, fiberglass is the filler and plastic is the matrix. Is it it? Okay. So, as I said, no, a module. No. When we say matrix, is the homogeneous. And then, and then the filler is something that you add to the homogeneous mixture. So, glass, obviously, here is the matrix. And plastic is the filler. Because glass is the homogeneous. And then plastic is just the reinforcement. So, siya yung filler. It's not the other way around. So, this is the answer. So, last question. Martensite appears when austenized uh, iron. No? So, di ba kanina naalala nyo? Uh, iron at room at room temp siya ay ferrite. So, when you heat it, to uh, high iron to 1,500 degrees Celsius, it becomes austenite. Austenite. That's it. So, Martin, sabi naman dito, martensite appears when austenized. Iron carbon alloys are rapidly cooled. So, rapidly cooled, sabi sabihin, papalamigin mo ulit siya. So, kaso na dito, rapid cooling. Okay. So, it converts from it converts uh, ferrite, iinitin mo siya to 1,500 uh, 1, degrees Celsius, it becomes austenite. So, austenite na siya, bigla mo siyang uh, ira-rapid cool. So, magiging, hindi na siya ferrite, magiging martensite siya. Which is a different phase. No? Martensite. Now, the question is, this rapid cooling is called blank. Now, what do you call that rapid cooling? No? What is the layman's term? So, the answer to that is called quenching. Quenching. No. So, quenching is like this. So, as I Google. Quenching. Yan. Rapid cooling. No. Quenching is the rapid cooling. Yung kapag nagbabaga siya, tapos bigla mo binasa sa tubig. Yung pshhh. Yan. Yan yung... So, ang tanong dyan ay, Sir Ikal, kailan, bakit ba ginagawa yan? So, kung alala nyo, Iron Man. So, alala niyo sa Iron Man, no? Diba? Ganyan. Naging, yung steel kasi, kapag hindi mo pinrasis yan, hindi mo siya ginawang martensite, hindi siya tough and hindi siya, ma hindi siya matigas. Diba? Pag matigas ang, me ang iron, ibig sabihin, bulletproof din siya kasi matigas eh. So, the pur kung purpose kung bakit ginag ginagawa yung quenching ay, ay para maging matigas yung metal. So, that's the purpose of quenching. Uh, that's the purpose. That's basically the purpose of quenching. Ganyan din ginagawa yung mga samurai. Yung mga samurai swords. Uh, yan. Mga samurai swords, it's quenching. No? Quenching yan. Port ulit na mga quenching yan. Kaya nagiging matigas yung mga swords. Mat ma talagang matibay baga. So that's the purpose. No? That's the purpose of quenching. So the answer is quenching. Uh, quenching. Okay? So, yun lang. Yun lang ang ano, overall. So, that's the overall um, gist of the material science. Na, pero, yun, 
barely scratch the surface lang yun kasi masyado pang masyado talagang complicated saka malaki ang science ng maths ay though that's our pero yun lang naman ang mga gusto kong ma, ma, tutunan nyo kasi we only have a very short period of time so so I hope na meron pa kayong meron kayong na gets so that's it bye bye